Well, as we come to this section in Revelation, we'll see that now the warnings are over and we are given a description of the final judgment. The sermon I preached from this section, I called the cup of God's wrath. And in many ways, it is a terrifying scene that we are shown here, but a very important scene. This is a part of the last book that God has given us and his wisdom that we need as the church to keep going and to make it to the glorious end victorious. And we need this picture as the church in order to keep going. And I hope as we look at it together, we will uh, see why it's so important that we need it. As always, I do encourage you go and read this passage before you watch this video. Uh, try and ask some important just diagnostic questions for yourself to get a handle of the text before uh, we dig in together. Spend some time praying, asking God to help you to understand his word and what this part of his word means for your life and uh, live for his glory in this world. If you are new to this channel, I do encourage you to subscribe to the channel and like this video and share it with those who you think might find this useful. As always, I'm just going to show some of what I've seen in the te text that has informed my understanding of this passage. And just the cup of God's wrath, uh, we see a number of times in this text, or just the description of uh, the wrath of God. So that repetition helps us to see that it is indeed the wrath of God in focus here. And uh, God is the central character in this section. So you just kind of you go and trace where we see the Lord God Almighty, uh, the King of the nations, he's called, or the Lord through this whole section, the wrath of God. See the glory of God. And what we're seeing here is the completed wrath of God being poured out. Uh, so we see this um, idea in chapter 15 um, of the completed wrath of God, God's judgment on the earth finally and fully done. And that is shown at the end of chapter 16 with this phrase, it is done. We get the full picture of God's wrath poured out on uh, sinful humanity. Now, an important tool when coming to any text is to understand that the original authors uh, structured their text in a certain way. So every text has a structure. This structure reveals an emphasis, and that emphasis must then shape our message. And so I'm just going to show how I think uh, the structure of this section is working. We get an introductory verse, and then from verse 2 to 4, uh, we get, uh, we hear the song of the victorious ones. And then we get the first of the pictures of God's wrath being poured out. And we'll see that that is a just punishment from God. Then from verse 5, uh, we hear another call, and uh, this is just reinforcing uh, the justice of God's judgment. And then we see some more of uh, God's wrath being poured out. And then, very importantly, uh, we, we hear the voice of Jesus. And then we'll see the final picture of God's wrath being poured out. So we've got somebody saying something and then the wrath. Then somebody saying something, the wrath poured out. Somebody saying something and the wrath poured out. In this opening section, we see uh, those who had been victorious. And we hear them uh, singing. And we see the victorious ones spoken of as uh, the holy people and the prophets. Um, they are also the voice that comes from the altar. Uh, we saw this in chapter uh, 6 verse 9. We heard the, the martyrs crying out, How long, O Lord? And here their prayer is being answered. And they are agreeing that this unfolding judgment 
is just and true. And then Jesus speaks to them and he says, stay awake and remain clothed. And something we see in the, the first uh, two of these responses is this repetition that this what we're seeing in this section is just and true. It is the, the just and true judgment of God. I mean, you are just. Uh, they are getting as they deserve. And again, true and just are your judgments. So we see very clearly that uh, the redeemed people of God and all of heaven are looking at this unfolding judgment and saying, uh, this is the just judgment of God. Now, as we've seen in earlier pictures, again, we see seven angels. Uh, this time they have the seven last plagues and we can trace them through the section. And these angels have seven last plagues, which are then uh, pictured as seven bowls. So with seven plagues and seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God. So these plagues are the outpouring of God's, of God's wrath. And these seven plagues are going to be the completed judgment of God. We met in the previous section, uh, the beast, we were told about his image and we see here that those who remain under their allegiance to the beast and worship his image, they get what's coming to them and it's terrifying. And the false prophet, that we also saw in the previous section, uh, so the beast and the false prophet were pictured as two beasts, but as we saw the second beast in the previous section was a picture of false religion, a religion that deceives and deludes people. So pictured here as the false prophet. Uh, so we see those characters make a return here. Also from the previous section, we met the dragon and here we've got the dragon and the two beasts, uh, these uh, Satan and his agents of chaos and destruction and suffering on earth. And in this section, we see these uh, demonic spirits that look like frogs coming from their mouths. We'll look at that in a moment. And something else that just helps us see structure are these repetitions in this language of I saw or I looked. And then we've also got the repetition of I heard. And we see that those on whom this uh, cup of God's wrath is being poured is on the people. These are people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped its, its image. So those who haven't turned to God as king. And we see they're the ones who have shed the blood. And God has given to them blood to drink as they deserve. They, they're getting what's coming to them. So we see sinful humanity are being judged here. And one of the devastating things that we see though is that in their judgment, they refuse to repent and glorify God. And we see they curse God of heaven. And the whole section ends right at the end of the judgment with them cursing God. Now we heard in the previous section, um, the, the angel crying, fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. And here, uh, we see the great city split in three parts and God remembered Babylon the Great. So we see um, these cities, these uh, people setting themselves up against God uh, coming down in the final judgment. They, they don't make it. Now just something else to notice here. What we saw when the trumpets were blown that there was this partial judgment. But here we see... Uh, every living thing. Uh, it's, it's a complete judgment now. This isn't the warning. This isn't the trumpets of warning anymore. This is the final judgment. And although uh, we see uh, the seven angels pouring out their bowls, the force of this we need to understand is all happening together. This is seven being that number of completeness. This is the complete judgment of God unfolding on that great and final day of God's judgment. So we don't 
necessarily need to think of these sequentially happening like this. This is all happening together. These judgments are pictured again very much like the, the plagues in Egypt. So we see these uh, festering sores, which are much like what we see uh, in the sixth plague in Exodus 9, verse 8 to 12. Uh, we see again uh, blood like the, the first plague in Exodus 7. We see this uh, darkness like we see in Exodus 10. And that darkness, the ninth plague, came just before the slaughter of the firstborn. It was kind of a prelude to the end, and here it's a big part of the end, this judgment that's unfolding. And this is darkness that is agonizing. People are gnawing their tongues and cursing God, but they're refusing to repent. Just like Pharaoh under the, the plagues in Egypt, they are hardening their hearts and refusing to repent. Uh, so the whole notion that people like Rob Bell have spoken of, that love winning in the end and everyone will one day end up in heaven, chapters like this show that that's nonsense. Those who refuse to repent during the warnings of this life won't one day repent in eternity. They will remain in their rebellion against God and against his goodness. Some other helpful Old Testament backgrounds you've got uh, the Song of Moses in Exodus 15 that gives us uh, background to, to this song. And obviously that is as God's people have been redeemed from Egypt and their enemies destroyed, Moses leads them in singing the Song of the Redeemed, which ultimately points ahead to the Song of the Lamb, uh, God's people rejoicing in our redemption. And that is what sets the, the foundation then for this unfolding judgment. Heaven is rejoicing because these are great and marvelous deeds. They are showing God's justice, that he is true. He is uh, the one deserving of all glory, the one to whom all nations will come and worship because his righteous acts have been revealed. This is part of God's righteous acts. As hard as it is for us to stomach, God's just judgment is a good thing. God will deal with rebellion against him one day. And this is something that we should actually be longing for. That day when sin and suffering and all the bad things will finally come to an end. This uh, scorching the people with fire. You can go and read uh, Malachi 4 for some Old Testament background to that. The river Euphrates was uh, what ancient Babylon relied on as their, for their defense. Uh, but we see prophecies in, in Jeremiah 50 and 51 saying that that uh, defense isn't going to be good enough. This place, Armageddon, uh, the, the valley of Megiddo, uh, which we see uh, in 2 Kings uh, 23 and Judges 5. Uh, it's a place where Israel fought some key battles, but here it's used symbolically for the place where uh, the rebellious people are going to line themselves up against God. But the incredible thing is this uh, demonic we see out of the, the dragon and the beast and the false prophet, these uh, frog-like evil spirits come and they go to the kings of the earth and gather them for battle. So these evil spirits are deluding people into thinking that they can, even right at the end, stand against the Lord God Almighty. But tragically, we see that as they gather for battle at this place, Armageddon, uh, the battle that looks like it's going to be terrifying isn't even described because uh, this from the throne in heaven, so God's voice says it is done. And it is. It's over before it begins. Uh, there is just this picture of cosmic chaos as the world as we know it comes to an end. And nobody can stand. Those who have been standing against God end up cursing God on account of the plague because they are facing the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. It is a terrifying final picture. But as I see, said, structure reveals emphasis. And we've got these uh, sayings that we need to just pay a little bit of attention to quickly. In the first saying, we've got this uh, just and true. These are just judgments. They're getting what they deserve. They are just and true judgments. 
This is uh, heaven's verdict. The redeemed ones in heaven and the angels in heaven. It's their verdict on what they're seeing. This is the just judgment of God unfolding in this big section. But very importantly, we see here in verse 15, the voice of Jesus it says, Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. And this is where it's really useful to go and read Revelation 3 verse 1 to 6. Um, that letter to the church was to a church who were in danger of being complacent. And Jesus' words in chapter 3 were, wake up. I will come like a thief. And if you aren't ready, if you aren't properly clothed, you'll be in danger. And so the call there was to wake up. To, and here, Jesus picking up on that and saying, stay awake. And knowing that this judgment is coming, what are we to do now? We need to stay awake and be ready for that day. Now, we are God's sealed ones, sealed by the blood of the Lamb. Nothing can take that away. But as the sealed ones, we can't just sit back and be complacent. We need to stay awake and remain ready for this day when we will join that choir in heaven along with the rest of the redeemed. But until that day, as we've seen in the previous sections, we still have work to do. We need to remain uh, faithful witnesses, patiently enduring. So this final call of the section to stay awake is very important for us to hear. And I think that is what this whole picture of God's wrath is saying to us as the church. This day is coming. Don't forget it and stay ready. Live ready. Be ready for this day. Well, if you have any further questions about the text, comment below and we can have a discussion there. And I hope that this is helpful just in revealing from the structure of the text what the emphasis is. That emphasis must shape our message. And the big message to us in the light of this, re this uh, unfolding judgment is stay awake. Be ready for that day. Well, God bless as you dig in further.